Hello, Empowered Woman. Welcome to this episode of the Empowered Woman Podcast. Today, I talked to Vanessa Miller, a sales and marketing expert that has a passion for helping women entrepreneurs develop a personal brand strategy that allows them to succeed in business their way. She's also a certified NLP coach, and we talked about how our beliefs and blocks can impact how we run our business and create content that attracts paying clients. Let's dive in. Welcome back to the Empowered Woman Podcast, the number one show on personal growth, visibility, and profit for women entrepreneurs. If you're wanting to start believing in yourself, giving yourself permission to succeed, and let your voice be heard to make an impact in the world as an entrepreneur, this is the place for you. I am so glad that you're here. My name is Marcia Spurk, and I'm your host, triplet mom, woman empowerment coach, and all things motivation extraordinaire. Welcome again, and let's dive into today's episode. Hi, Vanessa. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yay. So Vanessa, I met Vanessa in several different uh, virtual contacts. She just kept popping up. And then finally, I don't even know how it was, but uh, I don't know if I sent you a message or if you sent me a message, I don't know. But we finally connected and we're like, oh, let's talk. And we have so many different things in common. And it's really been fun to also be a part of a book club together. And we're constantly in contact, sharing insights and talking about um, insecurities and all kinds of different things. So that's really nice um, to be able to get closer with somebody, especially in a group context. So I really appreciated that. And we, and you recently launched your podcast as well. So that was another way that we connected is that I referred one of my clients to help you with your launch. So that was a nice um, bonus there. And I'm excited to be on your show soon too. So um, tell us who you are, what you do. I'll stop talking. (laughs) Well, I am Vanessa Ann Miller, and I'm a business and mindset coach for entrepreneurs. So if you're an online entrepreneur that sells courses or you're a coach or consultant, I can help you. And what I focus on is the mindset of marketing and not just the mindset of like your own mindset, but the mindset of your audience and what they're going through whenever they decide to stalk you maybe, and then finally purchase from you and then continue to purchase from you. And so I use NLP strategies for sales and marketing, and I really enjoy what I do because it's fascinating how our brain works and how we perceive things. And to know this is a superpower for your business. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that so much. And you know, I'm all about the marketing too, and understanding what resonates with people and how sometimes our own limiting beliefs, um, most times (laughs) show up in our content and the way we go about it. Everything is so intertwined and understanding that about yourself and your clients makes such a difference. Uh, One of the things that I do want you to share before we get deeper into the NLP that I so love and want to hear more about um, is also the background and how you got started um, because you started with network marketing and you were helping people mostly with network marketing. Tell us more. Yeah. So um, I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur since I was little and I did the whole college thing and did the whole like do what your parents suggest that you do. And there was just something within me that I was like, I just, I feel like I'm made for more. And so while my financial services business was doing great, I decided to go ahead and go with my gut and open up my own smoothie bar and um, fitness facility. And that happened to be part of the way I plugged my, uh, my products, my, um, my network marketing products. Mm-hmm. And what I loved about being part of network marketing is that you don't have to have a big facility when you're, you're plugging yeah. your products for this specific um, company. But what I loved about it was that it was a so low cost entry to start my business. That's what like hooked me. And then I decided to go all extra like I am and open up a 2,500 square foot facility. Well, what I found was that Women that were coming in to work out with us to lose weight, it was a struggle. It was a mindset struggle for them really to get the results they wanted. I could supply them with everything that they needed to meet their goals, but if they didn't believe it for themselves, it was not possible. And so to make a long story short, short there was some twists and turns in there, but it landed me in this. Like I had a very... Um, I was resistant to adding mindset to my business because I'm all strategy. I'm like, 
like I'm nerdy like that. Mm-hmm. But what I found was that people needed the the mindset component. And so I decided to become um, certified in NLP. And then I just added it to my offers and really added it to the strategy that I use and that I teach my clients. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that so much. And I always love hearing the journey because most times when we're going through our own journey, it feels so lonely, like we're weirdos. Why can't I just stick with something? Because you look at these other people and you don't even know their story, but you assume, right? That mm-hmm. they, they had it all together from day one, they knew what they wanted. And then it takes um, several different things, like you working with these people and realizing there's something else that's missing but I don't want to talk about it. And then you have that resistance, even though it's calling you. And then when you finally surrender, uh, you feel so great about it. And you wonder why was I so resistant and why didn't I do this sooner? And then you have to forgive yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> process too. And I found that the resistance also came from imposter syndrome. Like I'm not qualified to be right. a, a mindset coach. I don't even have my shiitake together. Yeah. You know, I was like, I don't even have my whole headspace put, put together. But then I realized that I was one to two steps ahead of someone else. And it was part of my, my human duty to reach back and hold someone's hand and be like, come on, come with me. You know, even though like I am not so far ahead of them, but I could, you know, definitely help them at least get two steps forward. And that can dramatically open up more opportunities for them. Yeah. yeah the resistance definitely came from my own mindset issues and right. the imposter syndrome. <laughs> Which is so interesting that now that's exactly what you're helping women with too. Once you understood, it's all about that awareness, right? It, we're kind of like dormant to this. And then we realize it in ourselves. At least I know I am like this a lot. I'm like, oh, more people need to know about this because I'm probably not alone. And that's where, again, I love having people come on the show to share the journey because it really stresses this concept of the roller coaster and the twists and turns. It's never going to be linear to really normalize the idea that you're exactly where you're supposed to be. And we need to stop thinking that we need to be somewhere else and that we need to be farther ahead, whatever that means. Um, And just really being grateful for where we are and knowing that everything's happened the way that it's supposed to happen. And we're going to keep getting those insights until we take the path that is meant for us. And you can't really rush that. With that, then let's get into the NLP um, and, and tell us more about like, going through the certification process helped you specifically. So did you get certified and then you launched this other part of your business or were you already talking about it? Walk us through. I started talking about it as I was halfway through it. It was recommended by my coach to mm-hmm. embody it. You're like, you've got to embody, you got to talk about it. And so I started seeing the connections. I didn't want to just be like a mindset coach. I didn't want to just help people with the mindset, but I started seeing the connections. I was like, huh, this can definitely relate to someone's marketing. Mm. Like if they understood some things like conversational hypnosis and hypnotic writing, then they can connect at a subconscious level with their audience and have a soul to soul connection in a way where they gently guide them Mm-hmm. to make a decision, a yes decision, or maybe even a no, but they rather, you know, I'd rather get a no from yeah. a prospect than, uh, not right now. And so, um, yeah, I slowly integrated it that way. Cause I was like, I, I, I had to get the experience mm-hmm. and it's been a beautiful journey because I've realized I, I faced a lot of my own, my own things. And I feel like the growth has been exponential. Like I've now softened my heart to connect with more people and it's just been a a beautiful journey. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so great that you were encouraged to start sharing. Cause oftentimes, especially with the imposter syndrome, we're thinking I need to know all of this and go through all of the modules when it's a never ending process. Anyways, even after you have the certification, you're still learning. And I'm sure there's different levels of it. Um, but to start sharing, I always say that the best content really is what you're going through right now because the energy is different and people connect with that. Um, and just like what you said, being a couple steps ahead or being a little bit more aware than somebody else is what makes a difference and um, get people to then become aware with you and see, oh, there's value in this and I actually need more of this or helping me implement or seeing this from an outsider's perspective so that they would invest in your help. So. Cool. Yeah. All right. So how, okay. I w- wanted to ask you how exactly you help women, but first I want to know, cause we mentioned imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that that is something that comes up a lot. Uh, what, what else do you see that uh, women, um, cause you, you serve women primarily. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
struggle with uh, in terms of their marketing and in terms of selling their offers that is on a subconscious level and that NLP can help. Yeah, a lot of times people, um, they aren't consistent. They don't show up fully for their business because they're afraid of the visibility. They're afraid of what will actually happen if they get what they want. Mm -hmm. And so I have a marketing um, breakthrough one-on-one that I do to help them release these limiting decisions, negative emotions that have been created from, you know, a long time ago so they can fully show up feeling empowered and confident and they can be consistent. And what I found is that that also helps with their clarity because then they're more clear on the direction that they need to go and they're more clear on what they need to say and who do they need, who they need to say it to. So it saves them so much more time. Mm-hmm. And then in my programs, what I do is I teach them how to increase their awareness of like what their customer or their audience is experiencing so that they can connect better with them. They could be one step ahead of like, oh, I already know what's going to come through for them. So let me handle the objections in my marketing. Mm -hmm. So if I do have to get on sales call, it's so much easier. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm promoting a program, uh, a free masterclass called Radiant Rapport. And it's about like connecting with people through your content Mm -hmm. so that they feel like they know you already and they they like you, they get those feelings, you know, like, oh my gosh, I have to buy from this person. Mm -hmm. And all of that takes releasing um, some mindset blocks that you may have and stop projecting your fears and your insecurities onto your audience. Mm -hmm. And I love the name of that radiant report. It's so clever and so cute. (laughs) Thank you. And it's, it's so true that it's not just because oftentimes when people think marketing, they're like, give me the script tell me exactly what to say. And that could be helpful on some level if you're just starting out and you don't know what to do. But a lot of it comes from you being aware of yourself and the energy that you put into. So that work is so invaluable that and a, a script cannot really get you there. And in fact, at times, I am even guilty of seeing people's content that gets so much engagement. And I'm thinking, this is not even special. <laughs> this is nothing so great, but it's, they know how to connect with their audience in a way that they respond to. And that also speaks to the fact that you're not meant to speak to everybody else and not everybody else is going to get what you're saying. Because oftentimes we water down our message because we're wanting to reach everyone instead of focusing on those specific things that you get by understanding the fears and the objections, like what you said, uh, before they even get on a call with you, you're already handling that and that allows them to connect with your content. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a beautiful thing. I love yeah. It. And I found that like scripts, generic scripts and templates, um, they're really self-serving. They are to soothe your own nervous system so that you can, you know, like you're almost as if you want to be told what to do and how to do it. So you're like, okay, I'm going to do it, you know, yeah. and I'm going to hide behind this script because then I'm just going to feel better about it. And so that's really self-serving. And when you can really create a strategy where you're creating these images in the mind of your prospect, then you're putting their brain to work to get out of the trance that they were in of maybe distraction Mm -hmm. and get them into zoning into what you're really saying so that they can make an aligned decision for themselves. Mm -hmm. And you can't really do that unless you are having a conversation with them or you know specifically who your ideal client is and what their their pains, but mostly what their desires are. Mm-hmm. Okay, I love what you said. Uh, the scripts can be self-serving because it's just kind of like a cop-out to doing this deeper work. And like I said, it is it is helpful. By all means, use it. It's better than not putting your offers out there and helping people with what you have to offer. <laughs> But there comes a point where that true connection and more of this um, getting people to know you through your content instead of having to, you know, send all the DMs, get on the call, all of the calls, um, getting people to really see you for who you are without having to work so hard and getting into that space of flow that is so elusive that people talk about. (laughs) And it really happens in this subconscious level, but we have to be willing to be uncomfortable and to share certain things that um, are the very things that people will connect with as opposed to, it's also very cold as well, if there is no personal involvement uh, with it. So so on that note, what are some things or I guess exercises or concepts that you could share with us that could help 
somebody that's listening be like, this is then how I create content in a way that Vanessa is telling me? I think it's to be very mindful of one, who your ideal client is like really. And I'm not talking about like, I know like in the past people are like, Oh, you know, ideal client ICA, like, you know, there's, yeah, yeah. There's like, you don't have to know every single thing about them. Like you don't have to know where they shop. Yeah. I think if you're doing Facebook ads, of course you need to know certain things like that. But I think, um, I know like when you have a conversation with your ideal client and really truly understanding what it is that they want, that's one step and what they don't want, you know, what are they running from and what are they running to when you can understand that and have like a, um, I guess like an, I get, again, like an ideal client, um, profile, because you know, a lot of the people you're going to be talking to are going to fit into this genre, right? Yeah. Knowing that. And then really reading into what they're saying. The, um, in Ready Hit Report, I'm going to be talking about lingu- linguistic patterns. Like you'll see things that people are saying and it's like, hmm, I see what they're struggling with. Like we, like for me, for me, I'm like one of those absolute people. I will say always, never. Like I always feel this way. And so when you see things like that, then you can really perk up and be like, okay, what are they really saying about the, the always feeling? What are they truly feeling? So being very in tune to the content that your ideal client is putting out there. Mm -hmm. Um, And then next would be working on your mindset, of course, so that when you are writing the content, you are not projecting your own feelings into it. You're really able to discern what is yours and what is their stuff whenever you're taking their content and rewriting something for it. Mm -hmm. Um, And then really letting go of the outcome, like really letting go of like, uh, how many people are liking, how many people are engaging? Because I, I know this, like, I will see some amazing content out there and I like it in my mind and I comment in my mind, you know? So remember people are not going to necessarily like press like or comment, but they're going to see it and they may resonate with it. And when you're creating stories and images for them, for their head to really connect with an emotional level, then they're going to come back to you. They're going to see you more. You're going to be in their awareness. Mm -hmm. So it takes patience. Yes. Oh, this is such good advice and reminders too. Cause we hear so many people say, don't worry about the engagement. It's like, but how do I know if they're actually resonating if they don't engage, but it'll show up in different ways and you will hear about it uh, in different ways as well. And it's just, yeah, that, that detachment is huge. And I love what you said about listening, paying attention to the language, obviously, because you work with language, but it goes back to the concept of self-serving many times content that doesn't resonate with people is because it's coming from a selfish place of, this is what I have to offer as opposed to how can I connect with what you need? Um, and it's more serving. And if, in, in order to pay attention to the language, you actually have to create opportunities for them to talk <laughs> and yes. not just be you blasting stuff on there, which is also hard because you think marketing, I'm just promoting my stuff, but there's way more than that. There's so many different layers and that's where the subconscious comes in that you handle. So I love that. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Well, and we'll make sure and put information on um, this class that you're offering and how to find you and all of that. But before we wrap up and you tell us exactly how to find you, I would love to do our little rapid fire where you tell me what comes to mind. I'm excited because it's probably going to be deep. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm, I'm hoping my, I like to quote stupid movies. I'm hoping that doesn't come up because oh, I usually do. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. All right. So the first one is whatever comes to mind, notice yourself. Notice myself. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think mirror. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, the next one, uh, listen to yourself. Mm, I think intuition, like that it's never failed me. Mm-hmm. Next is forgive yourself. I think that we all need to do that Mm -hmm. a lot over and over again. Mm -hmm. Uh, Empower yourself. I think of you. (laughs) My marketing must be on point. (laughs) That's all I talk about. And last but not least, transform yourself. Oh gosh. This, I don't know. This is, I'm like literally telling you what comes to mind. I'm thinking like, um, like weight loss journey. I don't know what. Yeah. Well, and I, I always like using, and I I love that you use that as part. I mean, you, that was part of your business, but that creates such a picture because it's so visual, um, more so than many transformations, especially inner transformations that you can't really quantify. 
And the before and afters are what people are just gravitate towards. They don't even need to know the details. It's like, if you can get me looking like this, that's what I need. But if you're able to convey that in your content with an inner transformation, that's where it's at, right? And that's the hardest, the hardest part. But yeah, I love that. That's what came to mind because that's the visuals are, are powerful. <laughs> Awesome. Well, tell us how to find you, where you hang out the most. I know you have a Facebook group. Tell us everything. Yeah. So I hang out on Facebook in the Aligned Businesswoman Facebook community. And um, if you're wanting to join me for the Radiant Rapport Masterclass, you can simply go to vanessaandmiller.com forward slash Radiant Rapport. But once you get into the Facebook group, you'll, you'll hear all about it in there. Amazing. Well, I'll make sure I'll have all the links in the show notes, get people joining your group and checking out your trainings. Thank you so much, Vanessa. This was so fun. And your podcast too. What is your podcast name again? The Aligned Businesswoman. The Aligned Businesswoman. Making it simple. <laughs> yes. You can find Vanessa over there as well. Thank you so much for uh, joining us and sharing your story and your light. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed our conversation. Let me know what were your main takeaways. Do you resonate with some of the insecurities and the fears and beliefs that we talked about here today? Send me an email, uh, contact at martisburke.com or find me on social media. Let me know and don't forget to connect with Vanessa. All the links are in the show notes. Until next time, bye.